scared to get off me feet. Listen to you, yeah, Alice. You'd think you were mage. I'm working in that shop all day. Well, you did want to leave Corbett's and go off to some fancy new lingerie shop. And I'm glad I did. Oh, love where I work now. So how is it? It's very different than Corbett's, I'll tell you that. I'm sure it is. Corbett's has everything. You're just in underwear in your shop. I'll have you know, Agnes, I have a very respectable uniform. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you know what I mean. Oh, I'll tell you what I do enjoy watching. The men can come in on their own to buy gifts for their wives. Good morning, sir. How can I help you today? Uh, oh, well, I was um, looking for, um, to, um... I'm uh, sorry, uh, sir. I didn't quite catch that. Uh, um, to, uh, uh, for, uh, my, um, uh, No, no, I still didn't get it. Uh, Are you buying some underwear for your wife? Uh, yes, yes, you can help me. Um, <sighs> Certainly, sir. <laughs> what size is your wife? Oh, uh, well, she's, uh, you know, uh, 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 a woman. Um, what uh, size is she, sir? Uh, she has... Um, um, Bra size? Uh, well, uh, medium, uh, or maybe large, uh, medium, and she has um, two uh, uh, for the, uh, you know, left and, and, and right. Uh, um, so maybe something, um, you know... Uh, a, White uh, mm. or, or, or black um, or uh... eventually I show him something and he goes yeah yeah that'll do buys it and rushes off. <laughs> I'm not joking, Agnes. The women up and down this road, I don't know them, but I can tell you their measurements and what they were to bed. Sure, that makes for some conversation in the shop. <sighs> I do miss carpets though. Well, you proved the point, didn't you? That once you've trained in Corbett's, you can work anywhere. And there you are, in your fancy underwear shop. Learned everything I know from Corbett's. Well, Corbett's is the oldest store in Portadown. <coughs> it is very high standards. Mm. They were proud to call themselves the House of Value. The House of Value. How long you been there now? Well, let me see. I always wanted to work in Corbett's, you know, ever since I was a little girl. I remember my mother worked there before me and my granddad. What was it the owner, Samuel Corbett, was fond of saying? Everyone that worked there knows this. Ah, oh, he would say, uh, Forty Nine is a hub of the north. And then the staff would reply, and Corbett's is a hub of Porty Down. <laughs> when I first started, the boys uh, in the menswear department, they were below us. They used to run up and play tricks on me and the other ladies. Really? What like? I don't remember now, to be honest. Oh, it was a great place to work. Still is for me. Oh, so very true. Well, I still enjoy the characters meeting the way in. Characters? Oh, yes. Portadown has characters. There's um, Herbie Briggs. Oh, yes, Herbie, who always had a good keen eye fixed to the ground, looking for a good-sized cigarette butt <laughs> when he was walking. And then we had Billy Hips. He was fond of a song. Always wore a bow tie and a, a tightly belted raincoat. Oh, his belt was that tight, nearly caught him in two. Oh, yeah, speaking of characters, did you hear the story of Mr. Fraser? You mean Mr. Fraser the tarmac layer? <laughs> How did that story go? Well, Mr. Fraser was laying down the tarmac on a road in Porta Down when he came across an object. Here. Lads, lads, come over here a second. What is it? Is that a bomb? And one of them kicked the object. Is that a bomb? Please, if it was a bomb, would you be able to kick it, would you? Yes, sir, wasn't best pleased, and he called the police. Let's have a look at this, shall we? Right, 
Well? That, sir, indeed, is a viable device. I can't believe his friends started kicking it. Well, it turns out that the police had information about a possible active device in the area. And Mr. Fraser and his team had dug it up and almost detonated it. <laughs> Suppose I better get going. Give my regards to Corbett's. I will. Corbett's is a hub of party day. A memory box of working lives, crammed with hours of work, in shipyards, on shop floors, in houses, factories, offices, laundries. On railways and on roadways, everyone worked powerful hard. In the memory box, I will keep exciting times in the merchant navy. Silver service for senior staff, exotic places, great adventures. In the box, I will keep memories of 32 years in a factory. A fine gold watch for years of service, shared experiences, friends and crack. In the memory box, I will keep my time at Miss Dunn's business school, then my first job. Typing, shorthand, earning £2.4 an hour, where all the women were so nice. In the memory box, I will keep the full fried breakfast made for Dad before he went to work. Most of this left for us, making sure his kids were fed. In the memory box, I can see my mother every Friday night, hoping Dad would bring some pay home after stopping at the pub. In the memory box I will keep my work as a mechanic. The years of making blinds and curtains. The antiques business which we built up ourselves. My father's memories of joinery on the great Titanic. In the memory box I will keep memories of all work enjoyed. And let bad memories slip away. Like the stitcher job my mum arranged. My first job making pins for hair, like getting paid off from a job at Gallagher's. I will also let the memories fade of tough times when there were no jobs, and also when I couldn't work because I had to stay at home and do all the looking after. Caring, that was the hardest work of all. In the box I'll keep memories of my really good and well paid job, market research in people's homes, calling to their houses, asking them to talk to me. I mean, not many wanted rid of me, as perhaps we'd find these days. Some, glad of the company, brought me in and made me tea. In the memory box, I will keep the food wholesale shop, where I worked straight from school. The cab of the lorry, where I slept between deliveries. The tobacco factory, where I spread the leaves. The job I loved in Harland and Wolf. In the box, I keep the memories of working in a weaving factory. Or office jobs in London stores, working with real gentlemen. I remember my award, a gold chain and a bracelet for hard work from employers. How proud I was. Such magic memories. In the memory box we will keep the moments, histories and successes of all our working lives. a building so tall it's called Belfast Mill but there's no smoke at all coming night of the stack for the mill has shut down and it's never coming back and the only tune I hear is the sound of the wind as it blows through the time we've been spinning we've been spinning Tommy Porter, what have I told you about those trolleys? Sorry, May, I... Well, you know me. Couldn't resist. I know. I promise I won't do it again. Just like you did yesterday? Oh, don't be telling the gaffer, May. Please, it, it was only about a crack. Of course I'm not going to tell him. I promised your mother I'd look after you. And you do, May. You do. You do know what will happen if he catches you, don't you? Yeah. And don't let him catch you. <laughs> I won't, May. I promise. Right. 
take that trolley back to wherever you find it, grab a brush and start doing some work, even just a little bit for now. Yes, May. Thanks. How are you getting on, Noel? You see that Tommy one? Tell him I need him. We skitters disappeared on me again. Honestly, we'll have to tie that young lad down to get any work out of him. These floors won't sweep themselves, you know. This is hard work. I need his help. And with Tommy not being around, it just makes things a whole lot tougher. He'll be getting fired soon. Oh, say any sick. Oh, place knows he's away with his friends fishing. They've seen him. Well, say any sick. He, he, he's been saying he's sick for the last three days now. Still, I better get back to work. Stand around here, talk, and won't keep me in a job either. Looking out of Belfast, out at the beautiful lock. I wish I was on that lock, on a boat heading somewhere, anywhere. I want to travel. I want to see the world. Leave Belfast. I'll be stuck here, <laughs> pushing some broom about a dusty old warehouse. I'll be keeping me here forever. There's so much I want to do. Dreams I want to live. Maybe someday. Maybe that ship will come in. I see it, get on it and never look back. Mother would understand. I'd still make sure to send her money for the house. Always make sure to look after them. Especially since Dad left us. Belfast. I've loved you since I've moved here, but, but I need more. I need so much more. The only tune I hear is the sign of the wind as it blows through the time. Weave and spin, weave and spin. Mm -hmm. As it blows through the time. At the east end of time, at the foot of the hill, there's a building so tall, it's called Belfast Mill. But there's no smoke at all, coming night off the staff, for the mill has shut down, and it's never coming back. And the only tune I hear is the sound of the wind As it blows through the tide, weave and spin, weave and spin And the only tune I hear is the sound of the wind As it blows through the tide, weave and spin, weave and spin mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As it blows through the tide, weave and spin, weave and spin.